Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Simone here. So today I'm going to be filming my July wrap up and this month I read nine books. Um, I originally started this month um, thinking I was kind of in a reading slump but I seem to have really picked it up um, since Booktubeathon started. If you don't know, Booktubeathon is a biannual readathon hosted by Ariel Blissett who I will link below and basically um, between the 24th and the 31st of July um, there are a load of challenges and you can just read as much as possible basically and although I'm not actually officially doing the readathon I just was inspired to read more because I was watching a lot more videos of people talking about how they were doing it and so I was enjoying it so um, in the last five days I've read five books yeah so that's kind of where most of my reading has come from um, and then I read a few books previous to that but I was pretty much in a reading slump for most of this month. So the first book I read this month was The School for Good and Evil by Soman Chanani and this book I really enjoyed it. I gave it a three star. Um, I think that it wasn't quite my cup of tea and that's why it did take me quite a long time to read and actually it sort of started my slump a little bit. Um, not fully but a little bit. Um, basically this follows um, two best friends, Agatha and Sophie. Agatha is a dark haired, dark eyed, strange person who basically everybody thinks is a witch and Sophie is her best friend and she is blonde haired, blue eyed, princess looking, you know how it goes. And basically every um, year in this um, village that they live in, two people are taken um, and they are essentially taken to this, these schools, one for good and one for evil, and they end up in fairy tales. And um, so Sophie is determined that to be in the school for good. She wants to go, she wants to be taken, and she is convinced that her best friend Agatha is going to be in the school for evil. And then they get taken, but they're around the wrong way. So. Agatha goes to the school for good and Sophie goes to the school for evil and it's about what happens next. It is really fascinating, there's lots of things going on, quite a lot of like fairyland tropes I think, um, but overall it was good. Um, I didn't really, there was a lot of characters and I didn't feel like I needed to know about all of them. Um, but either way I did enjoy it, but yeah it was, it was okay for me, it wasn't brilliant. So. That book was my kind of first week of this month and then I went on holiday between the 7th and the 14th of July and I took three books with me and I finished them all and actually um, I've mentioned this before in some of my videos but I'm not a book hoarder at all like I do not keep books once I've read them I basically get rid of them and so the three books that I read when I was on holiday I actually left in the caravan that we stayed in on the shelf so that anybody like the cleaners or the next people that came in could have them if they wanted them because um, I wasn't going to read them again and I thought it would be cool to leave them somewhere that someone might like them and hopefully they didn't just chuck them in the bin. So the first book that I read on holiday was Remember Me by Sophie Kinsella which um, I love Sophie Kinsella, she's amazing, she's got some really good books. I loved her Shopaholic series when I was younger um, but I also really like her standalone adult novels, um, I've read quite a few of them. But Remember Me basically is about a woman who classes herself as ugly, she's got bad teeth, um, she um, has a rubbish job um, and she is not having a very good relationship life and then um, something happens and then she wakes up in hospital but she, although she remembers herself as those things before, in her actual life it's three years later and she has perfect teeth and a husband and a great job um, but something's wrong because her friends that she was best friends with before don't talk to her anymore they don't like her um, and something's happening in the business that she's in and there's just lots of things going on that she's not quite sure and then this guy turns up um, and she just doesn't understand what's going on she can't figure it out and this was really interesting I didn't get the twist until right at the end uh, I really liked that um, but it wasn't kind of like thriller I would say it was very much contemporary um, but it was really interesting. I loved the way that they used all the different characters in this one and um, yeah I would definitely recommend any Sophie Kinsella book but um, Remember Me was a good one. Then I read a book that was not good and I hated it in fact. <clears throat> I gave this book a one star and that is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lengel. Um, 
this is apparently coming out as a movie this month or sometime soon um that's got like oprah winfrey and everybody reese witherspoon i think is in it as well and i just don't like it i have this thing about short books that everybody loves and at me hating them i hated um perks within a wallflower i hated the great gatsby and i've now hated um the wrinkle in time it just wasn't for me it was all over the place i just there was too many characters people i didn't care about i, I don't i didn't follow it completely um and the premise of part of the bit that i could understand i've read many times before so i feel like it wasn't really anything I care about so yeah not for me and then the last book that I read on holiday was the third book in the Mortal Instruments series which is City of Glass and I have read City of Bones and City of Ashes last year and for some reason I just didn't get around to picking up the rest of them now I have said before that I'm not one of those people that can just read like a whole series in, a, in one go because I get bored so I have to read one and then like go to something else and sort of come back to it a little bit later unfortunately I kind of didn't come back to it um anyway I read the third book um while I was on holiday and I absolutely loved it I gave it five stars um I love the relationship between Jace and Clary in this um I just love everything like I love Simon I love Luke <sighs> just love it I can't really say much else because I don't want to give away any spoilers but um because it is a sequel but I really loved it and I'm so glad I got to continue on in that world and I really want to read the fourth one which I think is let me look at over there uh City of Fallen Angels I want to read that really soon so yes I've also just noticed that pretty much none of the books I have read this month I actually have physical copies of I either left them at the holiday place or I borrowed them from the library so maybe there'll be like one book I actually have but I can't remember so let's go on to the next one on the way back from my holiday um because I'd left my books there I didn't have anything to read so I listened to an audiobook and then when I got back here I um finished that and it was Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn um I've read this before at least, I think at least twice um I really like this book it's really strange um i've finished reading dark places which is gillian flynn's first uh, other novel it's not her first one um i read that last month and in fact i'm currently reading sharp objects by the same author which is her debut novel um but i just wanted so I, this was an audiobook i had that I hadn't listened to the audiobook before and i just wanted something that was familiar um yeah so i read this this follows nick dunn and amy dunn so nick and amy are celebrating their fifth wedding anniversary and Amy goes missing and then Nick is the prime suspect in her disappearance slash murder and um, it's really really good there's so many twists and turns in this that you wouldn't see coming obviously now I do because I've already read it before um, but I've noticed now because I've read more Gillian Flynn books that her like forte is female characters that you don't like but that you kind of have some admiration for um, but yeah, I really liked this book. I gave this a five star. Then I read The Giver by Lois Lowry. Now I got a recommendation um, for this off of um, Cece from The Problems of a Book Nerd. And um, she has always said that this is her favourite book. And so I was kind of like, okay, I'm going to give it a go. I was a bit sort of dubious because, as I've just mentioned previously, I usually hate really short books that everybody loves. Like they see, it seems to be a trend. So I was kind of like, right, let's just see what I think and how it goes. And I gave this book a four star. I really loved it. I read this actually in about an hour and a half um, on Monday um, of the book Booktubeathon. Um, so that was great. Um, and yeah, I just really loved it. There were some interesting premises to it. It basically follows a young boy who's part of um, a world where basically everyone has decided that they're going to be part of the sameness and essentially that means everybody does the same things they're all like regimented and they have the same things and they do the same things and they get at each age um, they get given something else so like at the age of nine they all get a bike um and they're not allowed to ride it before that and they, they're very regimented and if they do anything out of line they kind of get in a lot of trouble and, and they you know things happen and it's just really interesting and um, I love the way it was written. I love that the author didn't feel like they needed to like flesh it out massively to make it a really long one. Um, I actually felt like, the, I think it was 8, 180 pages and I felt like that was perfect. 
Um, I know there's more in the series, I think, and I would be interested to read them. Maybe not straight away, but um, I just really like it. I'm glad that I finally have a short book that everybody likes that I also like. Then the next book that I read was The Titan's Curse, which is the third book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. Um, again, this is a series which I've been kind of slacking on recently. I read the first two books and then, strangely, I read the first two books of the other one um, and then I just stopped reading it. Um, anyway, I got the third one out of the library, uh, I want to say, a couple of weeks ago now, um, but I was on holiday and then I came back off holiday and I decided that this is a really short book, I really want to read it and also somebody had taken a reservation out on it so I was like I need to get it read because I do not want to have to take this back and then do the whole thing again. Um, I also really want to read some more of Rick Riordan's books and um, I've heard really good things about them but um, obviously I can't really read them until I've read Percy Jackson so I think I've got two more left in the series now so hopefully I can get to them fairly quickly. I really liked it though, I gave it a four star. Then I have another book that I read this week and I read this in two days, which was quite impressive because it's about 530 pages, but it is If You Were The Only Girl by Anne Bennett. Now, um, you'll know if you've read my blog or you've seen um, some more of my videos, but basically um, I really love World War II books and this was a World War II book, so it had a tick immediately. Um, this follows the character of Lucy who when her father dies she um, is offered a job working as a scullery maid in a big um, house for the Hetheringtons and um, she so she moves out of the family home and she sort of sends the money back and forward and then when she moves into this house um, she meets the boy that lives at the house um, called Clive and they sort of start to fall in love and um, it's about everything that happens during the World War and the relationship between them and the fact that they are completely different classes. So um, Lucy is obviously a scullery maid whereas Clive is the master of the house and so it gets very um, intense and lots of things happen. This book actually amazes me how much happens in this. This is also set in Ireland um, so it was quite funny because my um, boyfriend's um, family is from Ireland so when I was reading this I was kind of reading it in their voice but I also think that some of the names in it were really hard to, like me to say I had to like put it into Google like how to pronounce this name um, but I really really liked this and I gave this a five star because it was absolutely fantastic and then the last book that I read this month I had out the library and to be honest I didn't um, anticipate reading it quite this soon I was going to read other ones and then come back to it but um, somebody put a reservation on it so I had to read it otherwise I would have had to take it back without reading it and this is When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi, I think that's how you say it. And this book really opened my eyes. Again, this is about a 220 page book and I read it in a night. Um, but basically, um, this follows um, the true story of a man named Paul Kalanithi who was just coming to the end of his 10 year training to be a neurosurgeon. And then he is diagnosed with terminal lung cancer, which then spreads to his spine. And this book was really sad. Um, it was really difficult, but it was also humbling because it's not a spoiler. It says in the front, but basically, so Paul starts to write this book and then he gets most of the way to the end and then he dies. And so his wife writes the epilogue to the book um, and sort of rounds it off. But this book was just really well written and he had really thought about his mortality and what life really means and how we go about what we do every day and it was just awe inspiring. I couldn't believe that a man who was, you know, he knew he was dying, um, he had a new baby daughter and he still found the strength and the courage and the bravery to write a book about his experience and I guess he wanted to leave something like a legacy or leave like a stamp in the world to be like this is what I think and I massively applaud him for that I also um I was talking to my boyfriend about it and I was because I when I love a book like I will tell them uh, like tell him everything about it and I told my mum as well and I was just telling him everyone and my dad and um I was just saying that like it his wife how much she must have struggled to read all of it and then still written an epilogue and like still gone on with her life and her daughter because her daughter was only about a year and a half old I think when she when he died 
and it's just it was absolutely oh, I have no words other than it was literally heartbreaking but also heartwarming at the same time and knowing it was a true story was like the most heartbreaking part so yeah it was really really sad but I would definitely recommend anyone to read it because it's brilliant. So that is the end of my July wrap up. I hope you liked this video. Um, give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments down below what um, books you read this month. Um, I'd be really interested to know and if you've read any of the ones I've read what did you think about them? Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I shall see you guys next time. Bye!